Hi and a very warm welcome to this course on decision trees. In this course, we'll be looking at a tree-based algorithm called a decision tree. Before we deep dive into it and understand it in a lot more detail, let me first give you an overview of what we'll be covering in the entirety of this module. We'll first look at what is a decision tree. We'll discuss the terminologies related to decision trees. We'll also look at different splitting criteria in decision trees. And moving forward, we'll look at the pros and cons of decision trees. Finally, we will implement decision tree in Python to get a solid and practical understanding of this wonderful algorithm. During the implementation, we'll also see how to plot a decision tree and save it in an image format, which, as you'll soon see, is extremely helpful when we're explaining a model. So let's begin. I'll start off by using a very simple example. Let's say we have a data of 20 students, out of which 10 play cricket, whereas 10 do not. So the red plus signs here, as you can see, represent that a student does play cricket and the green negative ones that you're seeing in this box represent that these people do not play cricket. Now we have the following features of the students. We have their height, their performance in a class, which tells us how the students have been performing in the tests that are conducted in the class. And finally, we have their class, which basically defines the current class of the student. Using these features, we want to train a model and predict whether they will play cricket or not. Now, when we look at this data that's available to us, we have a total of 20 students, out of which 10 play cricket, and hence the percentage of students who do play cricket is 50%. And we have attributes of students like height, performance in the class, and from which class they belong. Now, the teacher wants to identify subgroups so that these subgroups are very similar with respect to playing cricket or not based on the given attributes. For example, let's say we're dividing population into subgroups based on their height. We can choose a height value, let's say 5.5 feet, and split the entire population such that students below 5.5 feet are part of one subgroup and students above 5.5 feet will be in another subgroup. After the split, let's say we got this distribution. As you can see here, there are 8 students who are below 5.5 feet and out of those 8 students, only 2 are actually playing cricket. Hence, the percentage of students who are below 5.5 feet in height and play cricket is 25%. And I can see that 75% times people who are below 5.5 feet do not play cricket. Whereas there are 12 students above 5.5 feet and out of those 12 students, 8 as we can see in this box are playing cricket. And the percentage of playing cricket in this case is somewhere around 67%. At a broad level, the teacher is more confident while selecting students from these two groups and saying that they will play cricket or not compared to our original population. With me so far? But what do you think? Out of the given three variables, height is the right one. And why 5.5 feet? Could it be 6 feet or something else as well? Well, let's first try with another variable. Let's split the population based on performance. Here, the performance is defined as either above average or below average. We'll again divide the population based on these categories. And let's say we got a distribution like this. Here, 14 students are above average and out of these 14 students, 8 play cricket and hence the percentage here will be somewhere around 57%. In the below average category, we have a total of 6 students out of which 2 play cricket and the percentage will be, you guessed it, around 33%. And finally, we have one more variable, class. And hence, we can split the entire data on class as well. Let's say the students in this data are either from class 9 or class 10. And hence, we can use them as categories to split the data. After the split, we get this distribution. A lot of students in class 9 play cricket, whereas the number becomes quite less if we look at class 10. Perhaps students in class 10 are busy with their board exams. I mean, there could be a lot of reasons. Let's look at the numbers and percentages. In our data, we have 10 students from class 9 and 10 from class 10. 
in class 9 8 out of 10 are playing cricket which is exactly 80% whereas in class 10 only 2 out of 10 are playing which comes out to be 20% this is how we can split the data based on the features available to us if you would have noticed we've created three different decision trees till now every time we split the entire data into two subsets based on certain conditions or decisions and that's how we got a decision tree as we saw this was one decision tree where we split the data based on the height of the students here's another decision tree where the decision was made based on the performance of the students in the class and the third tree we looked at which had split the data based on the class of the students so which of these three decision trees do you think is better or can i say that which is giving more confidence to the teacher while predicting the behavior of students whether they play cricket or not in decision trees what we want is to have a decision that can separate the classes which in a case is whether the student plays or does not play cricket so we want all the positives to be on one side or one node and all the negatives in the other node don't worry we'll look at what a node is in one of the upcoming videos so which of these three scenarios do you think is the better split you can pause the video if you want here and just think about it for a second before we move on If you look at the split on class here in the third decision tree that we have it has segregated 80% students who play cricket which is more than any of the other two splits so we can say that the split on class is better than the other splits as it has produced almost pure nodes we'll discuss more about these pure nodes and how to decide the right split in order to have pure nodes in the upcoming videos i'll see you there Thank you.